Hi guys and welcome to this week's video. This video is about how to set up a Ryzen server on Unraid with Passthrough. You'll see how I set it up, the problems I experienced and the solutions I used to overcome them. So let's get started. So, building an Unraid server. Well, we know it's not always easy. We choose the parts that we'll use, depending on what the server's going to do. Now, most of us, we want a little bit more than just NAS duties. We maybe want to run some Docker containers, or some VMs as well. Maybe even pass through a GPU, and do some gaming. Now, we had Ryzen CPUs hit the scene a while back now. So just what's it like, using a Ryzen CPU and running Unraid? Well, let's find out. Now, before we start, I'd like to give a big thanks to Pete Martin over in California who made this video possible. He sent over a Ryzen 1500X and an ASRock AB350 Gaming K motherboard to me all the way over here in the UK. So I put these parts with 16 gigs of DDR4 RAM, a one terabyte Western digital drive for the array, a Toshiba 256GB NVMe drive for cache drive, an MSI NVIDIA GTX 750Ti for the GPU, and the case, well, actually I had to buy two cases because I didn't read which size motherboard fits in the Thermotate Core V21 case, only to find out that it didn't fit an ATX motherboard. So I ended up putting it in a CIT Jetstream ATX case, along with a 500W power supply. So, note to self, always read the specs before ordering and not afterwards. So, when I do a build, I always just put the CPU, RAM and graphics card into the motherboard and fire it up on the desk. There's nothing worse than putting everything together in a case, only to find out that something's faulty, then having to disassemble everything. So, now it's all been tested, I can now go ahead and put it inside the case. Now, this case didn't prove easy to work on at all. The first thing I did was to line up the motherboard so I could see where I'd need to put in the motherboard standoffs. And the standoffs that came with the case were those horrible plastic ones that kind of stick through the motherboard, the ones where you can't put screws in. And the case wasn't very well made and it was actually really quite difficult to get those to screw down into the hole. Anyway, so with the standoffs put in, then I put the motherboard in and secured that down. And I had to use a 4-pin to 8-pin CPU power adapter on the power supply and you have to bend the PCI expansion slot things back and forwards to break them off um, so you've got to be careful not to cut yourself on this case um, so after that just pop the graphics card in and then after struggling trying to get the SATA cables in properly onto the motherboard because there's so little space in this case but I finally got the one terabyte hard drive in now as you can probably guess I'm not a big fan of this case it's awkward to work on and the build quality well it's nothing better than poor but it was cheap, costing only £35, and that included a power supply, so I can't really expect much. You know, years back I always used to think it wasn't worth spending a lot of money on a case, because all it did was hold the parts in it. But having used quality cases for my computers for the last few years, I would say it's one of the best investments you can buy. Buy a good case and a good power supply, it's the foundation of your server build. Anyway, all of the parts are in the case now, and the case doesn't look too bad. So let's test the hardware in it, and see how well it does running on RAID. So let's download the USB creator tool from the LimeTech website, and then create our USB on RAID stick. And because there's a Ryzen CPU in this server, I'm going to download the latest version of Unraid. I'm going to download the release candidate version. As of this video, it's RC14. And whilst creating the flash drive, I'm going to name the server and give it an IP address, just so it's easier when everything's done. Now, I'm just going to look at the contents of the flash drive and run the make bootable file. I found if I don't do this after using the tool, then the flash drive isn't bootable with the Mac USB creator. OK, so now I'm going to eject the drive and put it into the server and boot the server and then type in the IP address that I used in the creation of the tool. And first we'll come to the registration page where we can either purchase an Unraid server key or we can use it as a trial. 
So once we've sorted out the registration, let's click onto plugins before we set up the array and just install community applications and unassigned devices. So for community applications, we just go to the Lime Tech forums and then scroll down to plugin support. Then click on community applications and scroll down the page a bit and then copy this URL here and go back to the Unray Web UI, click install plugin and then paste it in here and then click on to install. That will install community applications and now there'll be an apps tab at the top. So if we click onto that, we can then install other apps and now I'm going to install unassigned devices. So just type it in and do a search and then click on the hard drive icon and that will pull down and install unassigned devices. Right, so with those two plugins installed, we can now go and set up the array. I'm going to assign my one terabyte drive as the only data disk in the system. And for cache drive, I'm going to assign the NVMe drive. So with the array built, then we can install some VMs and some Docker containers and test and see how well Unraid's running on a Ryzen CPU. But before we go ahead and install any Docker containers or VMs, let's have a look at the system info and check everything's fine there. Okay, so you can see that the HVM is disabled. Now this is the virtualization extensions of the Ryzen CPU. So we're gonna to have to enable that if we want to use VMs on this system. The IOMMU is enabled, so that's fine. But we are gonna to need to reboot the system and go to the BIOS and enable these settings. So once in the BIOS settings, we need to go to the advanced CPU settings and the virtualization is called the SVM mode, so we need to make sure that's enabled. And on my system, the IOMMU was already enabled, but if you find yours wasn't, then head across to the Northbridge configuration and enable that. There are other BIOS settings that can be changed that have been known to help with Ryzen, but I just want to keep everything standard for now and see how it runs. The only other setting changed at this point was obviously the boot order to boot from the USB. Okay, so back in the Unraid web UI, let's have a look at system info again, and that's good, everything's looking fine here. So let's also have a check in the system devices and check our IO MMU groups. Um, here you can see that my GPU is bunched into group two with other devices. So we're gonna have to change that. So go to settings, VM manager, and let's try enabling ACS override. Having changed this to take effect, we are gonna have to reboot the server. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm quickly going to go to disk settings and enable the array to auto start so I don't have to keep doing that every time I reboot. So let's restart the server. And once it's rebooted, let's go back across to the tools and then system devices and see if the graphics card's now got its own group. Great, so the GPU is now in its own group, in group 15. That's just what we wanted. But let's look at the onboard sound card here. That's not in its own group, so we couldn't pass it through. Normally, we can't split up the groups anymore because we've already used the ACS override patch and there's nothing much more we can do. But with Ryzen motherboards, often upgrading the BIOS gives us better IO MMU support. So we'll do that later and then come back here and look and see if there are any changes. But for now, let's just install a Docker container. And I'm going to install Crusader because it's a really useful container for moving files around. Okay, so it's done. So now let's click on done. Right, so nothing's happening. Let's try and click on one of the tabs at the top. Still nothing. So this looks like it's our first Ryzen problem. So I'm going to open terminal and just see if I can SSH into the server. No, it's down. Basically, it's just locked up. Now this seems to be a common problem with Ryzen CPUs. So let's think what we can do. So I'm gonna hold the power button in on the server, reboot it and go into the BIOS again. And I'm gonna disable C states and see if that makes a difference. As a lot of people reporting that this can increase the stability. Well, so that lasted about an hour and then at one hour, eight minutes, the server locked up again. So for me, disabling C states didn't work. So back to the drawing board. So after a lot of umming and erring, I decided to actually re-enable the C states as it wasn't working disabled anyway. So I decided to try adding a kernel parameter to the syslinux config file to remove all the cores from running RCU callbacks. 
and to do this we use the RCU underscore no CBS parameter. Then we tell it which cores for this to affect. So for a 4 core CPU like I have, you add equals 0 hyphen 7. And that is because my 4 core CPU has 8 threads, starting at 0 and ending at 7. Now if you have a Ryzen CPU with more cores, then this would be different. So to check, just go to the dashboard, scroll down to where your CPU is, so then put in the range, starting with the 0 and ending with the highest numbered thread that you have. And that will select all of them. So as you can see, I'm putting it in two places in the SysLinux config file, both the Unraid default and also in the GUI mode. That way, whichever way I boot the server, this will take effect. So now we need to click apply and then done, and for this to take effect, we need to reboot the server. So I'd left the server for about an hour and a half, and everything was going well and it seemed fine. So I thought it was time to start running a couple of VMs and pass through a GPU and see if it stays stable. But I was just reading that ASRock had released a new BIOS that day, so I thought I've got to upgrade before doing any more testing, especially setting up VMs. So time for another reboot. So I quickly updated the BIOS and then I re-enabled the virtualization features in the BIOS then rebooted into Unraid. So the first thing I wanted to do is I wanted to go and have a look at the IO MMU groups and see if anything was different there. And now you can see that the IO MMU groups are really greatly improved. There's lots of devices isolated on their own now from USB controllers, SATA controllers and the onboard audio card. Now let's compare to what it was like before. You can see here that the GPU is still in group 15, but look at groups 16 and 17. They're now split up into 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 and 21. So a good result. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is to set up a Windows 10 VM. Now I've actually cheated a little bit here and I've imported a VDisk across from my other server, which has already got Windows 10 installed and already got the NVIDIA graphics drivers. So it saves me having to install it and it should theoretically just boot up straight away. Okay, so quickly before starting up the VM, we're going to have to edit the XML and pass through the VBIOS from the NVIDIA GPU. The NVIDIA GPU in this server is the primary graphics card and this Ryzen CPU doesn't have onboard graphics. So just the same as any other server that has an NVIDIA as primary, it will need the VBIOS passing through. Now, if you're interested in learning how to do that, then please see my video about that. But for now, let's just start up the VM and check if it works. So I'm just gonna switch across now to the other camera and video the monitor. Now, hopefully, yep, there we are. We've got the Tano Core screen, so the graphics cards pass through. And here we are booted into Windows 10. So as always, I'll boot up my standard game Metro and see if that works. Yep, seems to be working fine. So there we are, we've got graphics pass through on the Ryzen running on Unraid, so that's good. Okay, so let's shut down the Windows 10 VM now and then go on and do another test. And I've been asked many times, does an OSX VM work on an AMD processor? Well, let's try it out and see if it works on Ryzen. Again, I copied across this VDisk from a working VM on my other server and then just set up the XML. So let's log into the system. Okay, so there we have our answer. Yes, an OSX VM will run on an AMD processor, well, on a Ryzen one anyway. And why does it work? Well, let's have a look at about this Mac. And you can see here that the system actually thinks that I've got an Intel Core i5 CPU. And that's because we emulate our CPUs in KVM. So it's actually much easier to set up an OSX VM on a Ryzen than it is to try and build a Ryzen Hackintosh. So that's two VMs tested and everything looks like it's working okay. So now what we're gonna do is actually start up both of the VMs again. And then I'm gonna leave this running for at least 24 hours with the VMs both running at the same time and with the Crusader Docker. And I'm gonna see if I have any freeze ups or any problems. So. We're on 2 hours 7 minutes at the moment, let's see what it's like in 24 hours. Ok so here we are back at 1 day 8 hours and 41 minutes. 
and it hasn't frozen up yet um, I'm going to stop the Crusader docker and go across to the dashboard let's scroll down and looking here the CPUs whilst the two VMs are running they're hardly being touched so let's scroll back up and let's open up the OSX VM and check it's still running yep it's still there so let's shut this one down now the Windows 10 one I can see it working because it has a GPU pass through and I can see that on my monitor so I've shut that one down now and so anyway after one day eight hours and 42 minutes and the server ran well it didn't freeze no lockup so that's all good but one thing was just bothering me a little bit I updated the BIOS on the motherboard at the same time as I added the kernel arguments to the syslinux config file so I couldn't really be 100% sure which thing it was that actually sorted out the problem with my stability. So what I did was to remove the kernel parameters from the syslinux config file and then fire up the server again and just to see what happens. And in under one hour the server had locked up again. So it looks like it was the addition of the kernel parameter in the syslinux config file that cured the lockups that I was experiencing. So, in conclusion, is Ryzen okay for Unraid? Well, at the moment it's not perfect, but it's definitely workable, and I actually really like it. It's great having decent CPUs with good performance that are not made by Intel. So if you are building a Ryzen server, here's what I would do. First, update the BIOS to the newest available and always keep checking if there's been a new version released. Make sure that all of the virtualization is enabled in the BIOS because it wasn't for me by default. And use the latest RC version of Unraid as soon as it's available. And if you have stability issues, add the kernel parameter for the RCU callbacks to your syslinux file. And then if you still have problems, try disabling C6 or global C state control in the BIOS. And lastly, keep your fingers crossed and good luck. And please, if any of you guys have any tips or new info, then please put it in the comments below. So here we are at the end of another video. I really enjoyed making this one and if you enjoyed watching it then please help me by hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel. And if you want to support me in making future videos then any donations are really appreciated which you can do from the donation link or the Patreon link in the description of this video. Anyway guys whatever you're doing for the rest of the day I hope it's good and I'll catch you in the next video.